with us from Kentucky, we have head coach Rachel Lawson, Kelsey Nunley, Ginny Carroll, Crystal Smith, and Emily Gaines. We will begin with an opening statement from Coach Lawson. Um, first, yeah, thanks for being in here because there's a really good game going on out there. So I don't know how you guys drew that short stick. But um, this obviously this was a hard win for us. This isn't the way we wanted to go down, especially having so many runs early. But um, I'm really proud of this team. I, I think that this team has done something very special. This is the first time we've even come close. We won 50 games. Um, that, that's something special. That's a real turning point in the program. I thought just getting to the World Series, um, I think the first time, I think it's really hard to go to the World Series. I think learning how to go to regionals and then learning how to host and then learning how to go to supers um, is all very difficult, but I think it's a whole other level when you have to figure out how to go to the World Series. So I, I feel very proud for this team because um, they're the first team in Kentucky history that's figured out how to, to go to the show, and I think that's very special. Um, I also want to thank, this truly is an absolutely wonderful venue. I want to thank the, the city of Oklahoma, and I know there's, there's a ton of sponsors in the University of Oklahoma. Um, ESPN, I, I would love to thank, you know, uh, USA Softball, ASA Softball. This is an awesome, awesome venue, and I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that I could be a part of taking our team to Oklahoma City for the first time. Thank you, Coach. Uh, we will open the floor for questions. Coach, uh, Greg Eklund from the Louisville Courier Journal. Um, the last inning, how do you look back on it? Well, I'm always a learner, so I'm already preparing for next year. Um, you know, number one, I thought Baylor got all of the momentum in the sixth inning. I, I thought they did a great job. And, and um, at one point, I'll be honest with you, I thought about putting one of our other pitchers in. But really, uh, the mistake with me isn't is that I didn't prepare them to come in. So the reason I went with Kelsey is because I'm comfortable um, comfortable with what they were doing. They were obviously timing her and, and scoring up, and they had me figured out. So a change would have been great. But but I didn't prepare them for that situation. It was un too unpredictable. And quite honestly, um, my bubble thought at the time was I, w I was really proud of Kelsey because you know, there should be child labor laws against what I did to her in the postseason. I mean, she threw so many pitches, but somebody has to be the first. Somebody has to be the one um, to have us break through. And, and um, you know, she can handle it, but she was also picked to be the one that could do that. And so she was the one prepared for this, for this moment. And, and she did an exceptional job with it. So I'm already, you know, moving forward, I realize in order to win the World Series, you have to make sure that you have um, a staff prepared. And, and I think you're going to see that moving forward with Alabama, and you're going to see it moving forward with Florida. And, you know, when I watch what they do, what they did is really smart. They prepared all of their pitchers for this moment, but they had to get there the first time, and the first times they were in the show, they also um, pretty much rode one arm. And, and so that's that was what I was thinking at the time. Uh, Pete LaFleur, College Softball 360. Coach, it seemed like last night, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you guys were rounding against Alabama, you seem to be a little more aggressive, uh, attacking Jackie a little earlier in the count. And that, if that's the case, it's certainly carried over to today. That The home runs early, you, you guys looked like you were looking to, to, jump, to jump on Canyon. If you could just discuss the uh, offensive philosophy going into today and, and how it was so effective early. Yeah, well, Canyon, Canyon is great. Um, the approach with Canyon, first of all, after you see someone who throws 71 at night, um, Canyon, as hard as she throws and as exceptional as she is, you can score up on a few more balls just because of the speed difference. But our approach was simply to try to lay off the high pitch. And, and when she she had it a little more flatter in the zone that we were going to attack it. You know, and, and um, I thought that approach worked. I think attacking has been the approach that we've had the entire postseason. So it was nice to see that game plan again. Um, and I just felt like our team went out for the, for the kill. And that's why you saw all the runs early. Coach Matt Hofeld, uh, SB Nation, Vox Media. Really, for any of you guys, you know, up 7 nothing. was there a specific play or a moment in the game where you just kind of all of a sudden you felt everything shift Baylor's way, or did it just kind of gradually happen over those last two innings? Well, I, I can't speak for them, but for me, there were several plays. You know, we, we, um, we pretty much went through the World Series without making mistakes defensively, and we made a few. There wasn't one play that hurt us per se. There, there were a few plays that hurt us, and um, some of them went down as hits, So, um, they did, but they were plays that we were making earlier. So I, I don't think we can look to one play. 
Um, I do know that I did feel them getting the momentum in the six, and, and no matter what pitch we threw, they were able to square up on it. Um, but I, I think you guys could answer also. That, that's what I was thinking at the time was the momentum and um, the plays, not just the plays in the last inning, but we gave them a couple of runs earlier on some plays that we didn't make. Jenny? Um, I felt the same way. I don't think there was ever um, just one swing in particular that really changed it, but I think it was gradual. I mean, we never, never, ever gave up. I never thought that they actually had the momentum until the very end when they tied it up. So, I mean, we had all the faith in the world in Kelsey and in our defense and um, just one thing after another, play by play. But, I mean, we fought hard. Proud of how tough we stayed in it. Kelsey? Um, I would agree with Jenny. I don't think that there was one play that made the difference, but I would definitely say when they scored or when they tied the game, they kind of took the momentum away. But, yep. <laughs> Emily? Um, I, I mean, I agree with them when I didn't think that – I thought we were going to um, hold them until, until they tied up with us. And then um, after that, I could kind of feel the momentum shifting. But like Jenny said, we never gave up and we kept fighting, and that's really all we could do. So, Crystal? Well, throughout the season, we've always been a team that's been able to bounce back when we've had defensive miscues or offensive setbacks. So um, being someone who's hard on myself on my, on my defense because I take pride in my defense, I, I had a feeling that the play in the seventh would have could have possibly been a pivotal moment, but I had more of a stronger feeling that we'd be able to bounce back from that because we are someone that's been proven to show that again and again. So um, unfortunately, the ball didn't end up our way, the wind didn't end up our way, but we, we had a pretty good season. Uh, this is for Crystal. You only saw Stearns once, but just from um, what your your hitters had done uh, against Stearns and what you had done previously against Paul and Canyon, what made Stearns effective? I would have to say that going into, I guess, was that the eighth, the eighth inning, I would have to agree that there was a bit of a momentum swing. And um, I know that I was a bit in my head because of the defensive miscue that I had. Um, in my previous at bats, what I did differently was uh, I went out with a clear mind. I, after speaking up with my mom this morning, she said, Crystal, just go up there with a clear mind. I think that was what was really the difference in my first three at bats. And then I guess my fourth at bat, I was really trying to do too much um, for my team because I, f I felt bad for making the mistake. For Kelsey, you heard your coach talk about the fact that she you sort of decided you were going to be the one to carry this team. And I know you've done that all year. Could you talk a little bit about how difficult it was to process all that late in the game? I know you got emotional in the dugout, but what that was like to try to battle through those tough moments toward the end. Well, it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done um, because I knew that I was physically giving my all, but just wasn't going the way I wanted to. So, you know, I just tried to stay confident and try to just Keep throwing hard and whatever happened to happen. But the thing that, um, I, I'll be honest with you, if it wasn't for Kelsey, we wouldn't be where we're at. If it wasn't for Crystal, we wouldn't even be here. So if you guys look back and if you see what Crystal did in Westwood, that was amazing. In fact, I was in shock. And <laughs> Really, um, because what she did, she went in there and she she actually outside of Kelsey, I think the two of them were the MVP. I would have given I would have given Crystal offensive MVP and I would have given Kelsey obviously defense because defense starts in the circle. But um, when I look back as a coach, we have so many moments throughout the season that could have been the what if play that we could have gone down. I mean, we could have lost to DePaul. Um, we were we were horrible in the first game of the championship game. And then we came out and we hit. When we went out to uh, L.A. and Supers, the first game we had some defensive miscues and the team came back and fight. The fact that we came in here and had such a good showing our first game. And then against Alabama, I thought it was a hard-fought game. So um, I never try to look at the mistakes. I always try to look at what it is that we are doing and what we are doing well. And quite honestly, I, I'm really proud of them. And I know we wouldn't actually be in this press conference in this moment without all the plays that they've made over the last three weeks.
Just for the seniors, uh, the position players, could you talk about what it's meant to you to be a part of what this program's done in the last four years, the three Supers, and being the first Kentucky team to get to the College World Series? Well, I don't think there's enough words that I can express um, how much this means to us personally. And I believe I can speak for all our seniors that it brings us a great comfort to know that this senior class and this 2014 softball team has made an indelible imprint on the Kentucky softball program. And I think that we can go home knowing that and move forward. I think the thing, I, the thing I'm most proud of about our class is um, coming in, or we just talked in the locker room, we were the biggest class that Coach Lawson had ever recruited at UK. And um, throughout our careers, I mean, all three of us, we, we haven't started all four years. We haven't been, we are, we're not, we don't have any All-Americans in our class. We're not just, I mean, 100% studs. But I think the biggest thing we are is we're tough. Um, we have been in and out of the lineup our whole careers, but at the end, I think we all brought our A game, and at the end of the day, I know that we're the toughest class around, no doubt. I mean, maybe I'm biased, but <laughs> that's how I feel. Um, like they said, um, it's, this has just been an amazing experience. Um, these past four years, we've been through a lot of adversity, and um, you know, no one really ever thought that we would be here. And like they said, we've been fighters, and we've seen this program go through a lot of changes. We've gotten amazing new facilities, and we've just done things that no one ever thought we could. So um, I'm just I'm so proud of my teammates and my senior class, and uh, we're just really proud. And all that being said, when we beat UCLA to make it to the World Series, I was roommates with Griffin. Actually, and I think we stayed up, sorry coach, to like 3 in the morning the night after we won just because we were so excited and our game was on ESPN again. So we were like, we're going to watch it, all of it. And I told Griffin, I, no matter what happened from here on out, that I didn't think it was possible that I could be sad. But that was before you get here and that's when you're still hyped and you just know it's the World Series. You don't know what that means. We didn't know when we were leaving, what happened when we got here. But it was just the World Series. But then once we got here and practiced and played and you tasted it and the bar is raised from – making it to the World Series and winning the World Series, once you've tasted that, it's, I mean, the, you just want to win it. Once you've been here, you want to win it. And I think that's why we're upset is because once you taste it, then you know how close you were and how much you can do it. And I told Skeeter after the game, she's got two years left. So I expect big things, no pressure. <laughs> Anything else? All right, thank you guys. All right, thank you.